If you're going to a party and somebody says to you, will you please bring dessert? I have the recipe for you. It's a vanilla sheet cake with a chocolate ganache frosting that is super simple, but extraordinarily delicious. And uh, I really couldn't recommend it more. I am going to separate a few eggs because I need one whole egg, but I also need four egg yolks. And using just the yolks makes for a very tender cake, which is lovely. I generally don't do that because I don't like to have leftover anythings. So having leftover whites is not always my favorite, but um, in this case, I really felt like it was worth it because the cake is just so nice and tender and delicate and just fantastic. So save your egg whites for making a pavlova. You can freeze them, you know. When baking, you're generally looking for your ingredients to be at or about room temperature which is great for combining, et cetera, but makes it a little more challenging to separate eggs, for instance. So if you are going to do this and you're a little worried about separating your eggs, separate them while they're cold and then let them sit for a while to come to room temperature. In my mixer, I have one and a half sticks of unsalted butter. It is room temperature and to that I'm adding a cup and a half of sugar, two and a quarter teaspoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Beat until light and fluffy. That shouldn't take too long if your butter is the right temperature. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to split and scrape my vanilla bean. When I'm making a special cake like this, I do reach for a vanilla bean, but if you can't find them or you, they're just too expensive, you can use vanilla extract or vanilla paste, which is a really uh, great product made by grinding up vanilla pods. And I think that it's a really nice product. I use it a lot these days because you get a little bit of those flecks of vanilla seeds in there that are so nice and I think that the flavor is really good. When you finish scraping your pods to make a cake or whatever you're using the seeds for, make sure that you don't throw away the pod. Save it by putting it into some sugar, making vanilla sugar, or you can put it into a bottle of some kind of alcohol like vodka to make vanilla extract and just keep adding vanilla pods to that and let it infuse and it's a really good flavor and you're getting more than you paid for. When your ingredients are nice and light and fluffy, you can add your eggs. You want to add them one at a time. They should drop in about one at a time if you just tilt your bowl over the mixer bowl and beat to combine. Go. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. See how yellow this is because it was all yolks. That's gonna make for a tender cake. Then you can add your vanilla seeds. And I did double duty with the vanilla on this one. I also added a teaspoon of vanilla extract. It's a double vanilla cake with a chocolate ganache frosting. And it's not just, it's not just a regular ganache frosting, it's a ganache buttercream, which I don't think I've ever made before on this show. And I'm pretty excited about it. Now you can add your dry ingredients, which is just the flour because I've already beaten my sugar and uh, baking powder and salt into the butter. You just beat in two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, alternating with some milk. It's three quarters of a cup. You could use cake flour if you wanted it to be even more tender and delicate, but I felt like I was already going crazy with the egg yolks. I don't need to go with the cake flour. Add half your milk. It should be room temperature for the proper combining. More flour. the rest of the milk, and then the rest of the flour, and then your cake batter is done. Making cakes is actually really, really easy. There's so few steps, really, especially in a creaming method cake like this, where you just cream the butter, everything just start, goes into the mixer, and boom, you're done. It should not take that long. It should not be stressful. This is a nine by 13 inch cake pan. It's been buttered and floured. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. If you're doing a cake that's like a bunt cake or something like that, that's much deeper. I usually will bake my cakes at a lower temperature so they don't get too brown before they're done on the, um, on the inside, but 350 is perfect for most layer cakes and sheet cakes and things like that. Give it a scrape, make sure everything from the bottom, often it, when you're making a batter that's this big, things will stick on the bottom, maybe not get fully combined. And then what you'll end up with is like a streak of butter on the top of your cake because that's the bottom of the bowl. So I try to avoid that by 
giving a final stir to my cake, but inevitably it happens. Don't worry about it. it usually doesn't affect the texture of your cake. So then just smooth your cake batter into your pan. I would lift this up, but it's the, the bowl is just too heavy. These glass bowls, beautiful, but so heavy. They have to be though, I guess, or they would break, right? I mean, you can't mix in a glass bowl and expect it not to break. But. Spread this into your pan so it's nice and even. Use an offset spatula. This is one of my favorite tools. It gets into the corners really easy. Gives me a lot of agility. So this cake is designed to be served either directly in this pan or turned out. So that's why it's buttered and floured, just in case you want to turn the cake out. But it's really just as nice to frost it right in this pan and serve it in the pan as well. Anyway, this needs to bake until a cake tester inserted in the center comes out clean about 35 or 40 minutes. Okay, so for the frosting, the first thing you need to do is make a ganache. To do that, you just have to heat three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. And while that's heating, you can chop up your chocolate, but keep an eye on it because cream can overflow and then it's a total nightmare. Oh wait, there's one more thing. Just for a little bit of sheen, I'm adding a tablespoon of corn syrup. Stir that up. You want it to come to just about a boil. I am cutting up eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. I like a lot of different kinds, but two of my most faves are Valrona, which you can usually buy at like a Whole Foods or whatever, or uh, Guitard. Guitard is a really great brand too. So look for those two. And for easy chopping, make sure that you use a serrated knife. I generally use either just a bread knife or an offset serrated where the handle is a little bit higher. Either one works really well. You just need those little serrations to get through the chocolate. Chocolate can go directly into a bowl. Make sure the whole bowl is heat proof. Most bowls are, right? Okay, in there, I'm gonna bring this back to a boil just so it's really nice and hot because the cream has to do the job of melting the chocolate. Turn it off, pour it right over your chocolate. Just let it sit there for a minute or two, maybe five minutes, so that the chocolate starts to melt and then you can whisk it all together until it's nice and creamy. Okay, I said whisk, but I have a spatula, so I'm using a spatula. You can use that or a whisk to combine everything until it is completely homogenized. Look at that, oh my gosh, I love a ganache, see? Fully combined, everything is melted. You wanna let this sit until it's completely cool because then you're gonna beat some butter into it. The mixture's still warm, the butter's gonna melt. When your ganache is completely cool, you can transfer it to a mixer bowl. And now I'm realizing that I could have done this entire thing in a mixer bowl, which I probably should have done because now I have to clean two bowls. Okay. Then you want to start beating your ganache. I like to do it a little bit first before I start adding my butter, but basically what you're doing is like when you make a buttercream, you're beating butter into the cold ganache. If it's already kind of stiff, depending on the chocolate that you use and the percentage of chocolate that you use, it gets stiffer or thicker, thinner. Um, this felt a little bit thin to me, so I want to start beating it because I'm hoping that it'll fluff it up a little bit before I start adding my butter one and a half sticks of butter. It's pretty important too that your butter be room temperature but not super duper soft because I have tried to make this before when the butter was too soft and it didn't work and I got really upset and I realized butter needs to be cool because that's what's setting up your mixture. So if you do find that that happens, if you're adding your butter and it starts looking kind of soupy, you can keep beating it all in and then chill it and it'll start setting up a little more, and then before it's completely solid, you take it out and then beat it more. But I can see that this is already getting lighter and it's starting to look thicker, so um, I think I did okay with my temperatures. I'm adding each piece of butter as it goes along and, and incorporates, but I do see that there are some little lumps that haven't fully incorporated, and that's okay because I'll just keep beating it once all the butter is added until it's completely smooth. And it does gain in volume a little bit the more you 
This is looking great. You can see it's actually way lighter now. That's the butter and the air that incorporated into the frosting. It is smooth and silky. I'm going to just use, this is just chocolate on here, just ganache, so I'm going to use this to scrape my paddle off. But look at that. It is so amazing. I can't believe I've never made this before. It really is my favorite. It's better than buttercream, less butter, uh, less sweet, but so silky. Sometimes you, you just start making something that you, you know, after years and years and years of cooking, I've been making buttercream frostings for years and I never made a ganache buttercream. And now I'm like obsessed. I just enjoy eating it so much more. Anyway, dollop it over the top of your cake. I think I'm gonna use all this frosting, but I might not need all of it. So I'm not gonna add it all. I mean, you know, that's up to you. How frosting-y are you? Like I said, you can turn this cake out of the pan if you want to and put it on a cake platter or whatever, but Especially if you're taking this to a party or you're going to a potluck or a picnic or whatever, keeping it right in the pan is great. It's great for transportation. You just cut the slices in here and serve right out of the cake pan. Then you make somebody else wash it for you and you take it home. <laughs> it's delicious. It's beautiful. This frosting is like the best thing that ever happened. And it's super duper easy. And if you wanna like make it a little bit fancier, shave some chocolate over the top or sprinkle it with some sprinkles or nonpareils or whatever you want, this cake is going to be the hugest hit at any party that you bring it to. Um, but I definitely recommend sharing it with some friends. If you like recipes like this and you want more, make sure to click like and subscribe because we have plenty more where this came from.